Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In episode 48 of Friday Morning Ramblings, I want to talk about getting your beds ready, your gardens ready for the spring. We had a 24 degree temperature last night. Next 10 days, maybe we get to a 32 degree night. To me, that's pretty much spring. I'm setting up my beds. I want to talk about manures, how to use them, how to put down wood chips, how to set up your beds, just everything you might do in a way of maintenance to get your garden set up and ready for spring. One of the chores that you're gonna to have to do is watering. I am affiliated with Hoselink. This is a paid placement. I highly recommend Hoselink for a retractable hose. I got this last year. It's changed the way that I can water. And for those of you that don't know what a retractable hose is, you know, you pull it out to the length that you need. This one is 82 feet of hose. You pull it again, it retracts. Nice, clean, easy setup. This is a 50 foot hose link retractable that I'm going to set up and I don't know if you can see it but I've been having to drag a green hose back and forth and it lays around there and it's really ugly. The 50 foot hose is going to go up there however the ground is frozen so I have to wait a, another week or so before I can put it in. But when you purchase a hose link you get 50 feet of hose or 82 feet of hose. It retracts comes with a uh, nozzle, comes with an extension to get to your faucet, it comes with everything you, that you need. And I will talk more about this at the end of the video if you want to learn more about hose link. But I recommend getting a retractable hose. By the time you buy a hose, a hose carriage, all the pieces, it gets really expensive. Get yourself a retractable hose. Now we're going to concentrate on this side of the garden because this is where I started my work and that's what I recommend is don't look at your garden as you got to get everything done at once especially end of winter early spring go in stages so this is where I'm planting first before we get to that it's really important to understand bagged compost and bagged manures now I have nothing against this company but when you read everything here it doesn't tell you what's in the compost really how long that it's been how long has it been composted if it's a hundred percent broken down unfortunately any bag product can say manure and compost but it doesn't tell you if it's fully broken down now why is that important if you try and plant seeds into compost and I put it down over here these are my tomato beds and I'll talk to you about that strategy of why I'm doing that now in a second if you put seeds into manures or compost that isn't 100% broken down, fully decayed, it's basically going to challenge your seeds for nitrogen or it's going to heat up because it's still breaking down and it's going to kill off your seeds. However, this is how I use it in the spring. It's about two inches here. This is where my tomato transplants are going to go. I'm not going to be putting seeds down there. Tomato transplants won't go in really until probably the end of April, beginning of May here. So this has two months to kind of mix with the microbiology, soil life, worms, rain, all that kind of stuff, further break down. But because I'm putting in transplants, the transplants are going to go below the level of this manure. All the good stuff that's already in here will wash into the root system. This will continue to break down. And this is a great way to set up your beds where you're putting in transplants, not seeds. Now, if you have a company and you know their manures and you know their composted products are 100% broken down, use them however you want and you can plant seeds in there, you can put transplants in there. Hope that makes sense. Until you really understand the company and the product, you're taking a risk. And even when you look at this, I mean, this is mostly mulch. This is, this is wood. You, know, you don't typically compost down pieces of wood like this. You use leaves, organic matter, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of wood in there and that's just not gonna ever break down. Well, it will. <laughs> it won't break down quickly. So you have to understand what's in your products. So this is how I use manures. As we come down to the other beds, that's all spinach. So in my zone, Maryland zone seven, spinach survives freezing temperatures, well below freezing into the twenties, into the teens. Brussels sprouts survive. Kale survives. I'm going to actually be digging out the spinach and putting it in another place. I'll show you that as we get over there. And then I'm going to be putting down the manure here where my tomato beds are going to go. So I'll clear out the greens that are growing. I'll eat those over the next 30, 45 days. And I've got my seedlings and seed starts and all that going. You can see the kale looks wonderful. That will all be thinned back to only healthy leaves. Big fat drink of fish emulsion. This will come back really well. 
it's good to flower, good to set blooms. I'm going to be eating the blooms and the flowers. They're absolutely delicious. Kale is a biennial, so the second year here in Maryland, after the cold winter, it wants to flower, it wants to seed. So I'll be eating this, you know, over the next 45, 60 days. Here's a bed that I set up with my compost. So one of the strategies that I'm using is I know that my compost is fully broken down, you know, 90% broken down. I know that I can plant seeds in there. So I'm putting that down where I'm going to either be putting seeds down or transplants down, but I know that I can start planting in this right away. Where I'm buying product or I don't have enough of my own product, like if I had a ton of compost and I could put this in every bed, that's what I would use. But I don't have enough yet to reach every bed, so I bought the bag stuffed, uh, bagged stuff for my tomato transplants. And I might you know, even use that for something like peppers if those beds weren't already set up. I'll show you those containers too. So my compost, 90% broken down, ready for whatever I want to do with it, is starting to go into the beds. And I started in this section. Mulch is down. If you have a lot of weeds or you're mulching for the first time, put down cardboard, put your wood chips on top of there. And you can see that I pretty much took care of this area. All these beds have my compost in there. They're ready for planting. I am really working hard this year to keep the strategy and principles that I preach in practice. The three P's. I got to practice what I say basically. So I've already put in French breakfast here. Did a video on it. Spinach and peas. Those are the three crops I like to plant first. I'll be doing a video on the root crops I like to get in next. These can take the cold really well. They can manage in the frost. And as soon as this warms up, they're going to take off and these will be the first crops that I'm eating. I just did a video yesterday. So these are window wells that I taped together. I have videos on that. This is what I'll be using in some places to speed up germination and get plants growing. Like the plants over here, I'm just leaving up to nature. They're going to take a while. I may put some peas in the corner over there, put this over it. The soil's going to stay warmer. Those peas are going to take off and get growing much more quickly than the peas to the right. Did lots of experiments with this type of stuff last year and it really works. I just did a video on um, planting a tomato plant basically and this is what it looks like sadly because it got down to 24 degrees last night. That's a warm weather crop. So your warm weather crops can't take a frost and this was really a um, prop plant for the video that I made yesterday. So I did try putting you know the fabric pot over it this over it, but the temperatures got down to 24 degrees, the frost got to it, and it killed it off. So we are not close here in Maryland to planting warm weather crops. Everything we're doing now, cool weather crops, they can take a freeze, they can take a frost. I'm going to be putting peas into here, I think, and because I have a pretty big garden, what I'm doing is, is mulching and fixing up the spaces that I'm going to be using first. And as the season progresses and these get planted and they're going, I'll keep working my way down that way. Let's come over here. This is where I, well, grew some kale. I put a ag fabric canopy over it that's used for trees. Kept out insects. I didn't get the white moth. Um, green cabbage looper on there or green cabbage worm on there. Everything did really well. I'll be repeating that in here because it's really successful to grow kales under ag fabric or protective fabric. Bottoms are cut out of here. These are fire rings. I will be working with a metal, corrugated metal um, company for different kinds of raised beds. You'll see that coming up. These are just, I think, 22 gallon um, why did I lose a thought? It'll come back. Galvanized tubs. There's The bottoms are in here, but I did poke holes in them, so you want to have drainage. But I grow pepper plants in there, and they do really well. So this is some idea that you could have, you know, for setting up your garden. And this is great, you know, right in here for a family of four, or something like this for a family of four. Something small to really get started. Let's step over here first. I just want to add that if you've been following my channel, you're watching different garden channels, you're going to see how I set these beds up towards the end of the fall. I put in wood ash in some, I put in alfalfa in others, put in manures in some of them, put leaves down all over the place, alfalfa pellets. 
If you feel like you've really set your garden up well in the fall, you don't really have to add more to it. Maybe a little bit granular, organic granular fertilizer. I don't want you to feel like you have to keep doing everything I'm doing because it can be overkill. If you did a great job in the fall putting in organic matter, putting in some fertilizers, some manures, you pretty much just kind of fluff up the soil, take care of it, and your garden's going to be fine. If you weren't able to get to it in the fall, maybe now you're putting in more of the compost or the manures or different things to kind of bulk up the organic matter, put in some NP and K and stuff like that. But you don't have to overstress with the garden and just do everything that I'm showing you. It's so many different options. And basically I put down a lot of leaves, different things in there, and I just, so mix, I just mix the leaves and stuff into the bed, you know, just like the examples I'll be showing you shortly. So in this section, I'll be doing a whole series on these fabric pots. These are from Root Pouch. I am also affiliated with them. But I'm going to grow an entire garden in here. And these are pretty cool because these can go right on concrete. They can go on soil that is poor, like maybe it's very rocky. You don't have a lot of depth to it. You can just drop down fabric pots, fill them up, and they work really well. Some of these are going on to the third year. They're not expensive. And, you know, even if you had to move, you could empty these out or take these with you. So you don't have to spend a lot of money if you might be in transition from your, from your home. 100 gallon pot, going to be planting onions and garlic in here. I'll be doing a video on that. And I don't expect, you know, to get a full um, head or cloves of garlic from the soft neck garlic that I'm putting in, but you can eat the greens and you're still going to get some garlic. The onion sets I don't really like because they tend not to develop really large onions, but again, I'll get some onion, I'll get a lot of greens, so this is just going to be something I use, you know, with scrambled eggs and salads and stuff like that. So you don't have to plant for, per for um, perfection, you can just use different parts of the plant as they're developing, and I'll be doing a video on that. But I also got in here, I mulched, I'm starting to drop down compost into the fabric pots, mixing it in, and they're getting ready. Last year, you mean you probably saw me, I put in um, leaves. This is alfalfa that I put in last year, and you can see that it's all broken down. This will all get mixed in. You can see some pellets that I just threw in because I had some extra a couple days ago. When it rains, these will swell up, turn to sawdust, but this is all pretty much set up for me to start planting in. You know, you can't drop seeds in here, but once I mix the leaves into here, it's going to be great stuff. I'll be adding some more compost. And that gets me to my next point. Let's come over here. You're going to hear a lot about don't turn your soil, you're destroying microbiology, you're killing worms. That's just not true. That's my no-dig garden. Started it, no-dig, love it. I just put compost on there, I just plant in there. No need to dig it, no need to turn it. I'm doing layers of four, six inches of compost. It's great stuff. You can see the alfalfa down there too. Also, people are asking me, does alfalfa or do alfalfa pellets attract mice, rabbits, and deer? And the answer is not really. I have not had a single problem with any animal coming in there. There's no hoof prints, no paw prints, no any prints in there of animals coming in and eating that. And in fact, it's been soaked down and now it's turning to that sawdust, but I'm just not having any trouble with it. Squirrels are leaving it alone. I don't see any raccoons or anything like that. So it's a little bit of an over worry. So no dig. This garden was filled with this bed, this bed, this bed, you can see the leaves were filled with leaves just like the one over here. I turned it with a shovel. I didn't break any rules. Went down 10, 12 inches, flipped it over, took the leaves that were up here, put them down lower into the beds, and then you end up with something like this. You know, a couple of sticks, you get rid of them. I can plant in there. You know, I can put seeds in there. Everything's going to grow fine. I've dropped the organic matter down. I haven't destroyed the microbiology. Worms aren't angry. Nobody's angry. The reason that you don't have to turn to bed is because you just don't have to turn to bed. If you're just starting out, you're going to have to set this up, maybe. You're going to have to turn it for a year or two or three until it gets to what you want. And then you can just start dropping compost on top. My point, don't be afraid to turn your soil. Nothing is wrong with that. We all have different soils. We all have different earth. 
sometimes we get that soup du jour of gardening where people try to make you feel bad for doing something like using a little bit of non-organic fertilizer god forbid or turning your soil you don't need to worry about that i'm like 95 percent organic i have beds i turn that i don't turn trellising i've already done videos on but you'll get the ideas of the different things that i'm using here as we're walking around this was my newest area that i set up i had alfalfa not alfalfa i got it on my mind. I had asparagus growing along here and it went all the way out down there. I still have asparagus there but that was just too much for me to manage. I didn't eat it all. It would get really tall. Asparagus if you don't know gets four, five, six feet tall and it ferns out and then it was just shading off this area. So I kind of took it back. What I decided was this will be my root crop area. So I'll be putting in turnips and beets, some more radishes, um, parsnips, um, anything that really is a root crop right in the space and I was able to get in here in the last two days add my compost turn the soil just like I told you I didn't break any rules put the mulch down so this space is looking pretty good and it's ready to go and I was just actually waiting for last night so now that that cold freeze of 24 degrees Fahrenheit has passed and I have 10 days of warm weather even the 70s a couple of days nights are going to be sometimes in the 45 50 area you know maybe a 32 degree night my point being is it's starting to warm up spring is here the cool crops can go in the ground so i'll be planting up this area couldn't do that bed because it's frozen solid still so i can't get in there this is where i grow my pepper plants have this set up this is a good example of and i used to love black cow manure it used to be composted down and when you would buy it it would be black cow it's like totally black broken down doesn't have any odor it was really good stuff last year at some point this, this is their manure it was like just like dried cow manure that wasn't composted or broken down at all you know they broke it up they fluffed it up real nicely and this has been in here since the fall and it's still you know looks like cow manure to me so I was really disappointed with that product however being on the top here it's okay because when I plant my peppers they're gonna go down to here these the peppers won't come into this won't be planted into this for at least another 60 days um, over the weeks I'll be mixing this through and eventually this will be fine but you really have to know your animal manures when you're buying them in a bag to make sure they work in your garden or you're gonna be disappointed like you're gonna put down all this cow manure in here or manure in here turn it in think that you got great stuff and when you're putting in your seeds or small seedlings they're not gonna germinate or the seedlings are gonna yellow and you're gonna be wondering what's going on it's because your manure or your compost that you bought wasn't fully broken down and I think it's a crime that you can just stamp compost manure on a bag and then people are misled thinking it's ready to be used in the garden for planting immediately it's ready to be used in the garden in different ways but I mean come on we're buying it so that we can start growing stuff in there we're not buying it so that we put it down and then have to wait six months before we can put something in there and I just think they should be able to you know they should have to distinguish what their product is so we know how to use it all right let me get off of that soapbox coming back down here you can see that I haven't gotten to this area yet. that's fine and I'm just working my way back appreciating what I'm doing up there accomplishing that will get seeded with the cool weather crops cool weather transplants and then I'll work my way back here where the warm weather crops are good to go you can see more kale in here that I popped in this will all get cleaned up over time let me show you one more design in here too so those were window wells that I showed you before this is just polycarbonate corrugated uh, I think it's maybe two feet or three feet anyway you can just take it fold it over in a frame like this I have videos on it um, just check it out just put in um, polycarbonate or put in seed starting you'll be able to find this video that's spinach in there that I seeded back in December and it's coming up and growing pretty well this adds some warmth if I put caps on the end it would get really warm in here this would be much bigger again this was just an experiment but you can use 
the window wells, you can use your own low tunnels that you buy, you can use polycarbonate to create things that you can get into the garden earlier. Let's go over to my no dig garden. I want to show you where I'm doing some winter sowing and I really do recommend the hose link retractable hose. This one again is 50 feet. It is a game changer. It's so much nicer just to retract your hose in, not have to wrap it around your arm, leave it laying around, and it comes with everything you need to get started. So in my no dig garden, it was actually the first space that I took care of last week um, because I expanded it. The no dig works really well. The principle behind it though is, is you're putting down cardboard and then you're putting down four to six inches of great compost on there. So your plants grow in that top, the surface roots grow in that top four inches, six inches. The bigger roots will go through the cardboard that you put down into the earth. And then you put on top of that to maintain it another four inches. So you just have wonderful stuff here. That's why you don't have to dig it because you have like 10 inches of compost in here. I expanded it. I know I just did a whole video on it, but it used to come to right here. So I added this space in here so I can have this whole row. This is where I'm moving my spinach that's throughout the garden. That will just be temporary. I'll be growing onions, leeks that uh, deer leave alone. But I want to just show, see if I can show this in here. This is just polycord with bells on it. This really does keep the deer from going in there and destroying it. Yes, they can re reach their head in here and get to stuff along here, but you don't need anything fancy if you want some deer to turn. So this is maybe the third year of using this and it's been really successful. This was the first space that I set up, so I took care of everything in here, mulched in there. This is where my sweet potatoes are gonna go. I'm uh, chitting my red potatoes, my yellow potatoes, they will be going into these containers. And I'm just really excited to start the season. And I'm practicing, again, what I preach. I'm trying to go slow and steady and not rush everything out. So I'm, you know, again, putting what I sort of, not really preach, but the principles that I put out there, and I'm trying to follow them. These are raised beds. Not sure what's going to go in here, but these have all been set up, mulched, so it's starting to look pretty good. And I'm happy with being able to take on little pieces of the garden, you know, as we move along. Let me spin out here, get my shadow out of there. You know, as I move along a little, you know, each week, I don't know if you saw it in there, but sometimes I just go in and I drop two or three piles of mulch. I don't have time to spread it out, but I have 15, 20 minutes. I just put the piles of mulch out there and I will get to them later. So slow and steady, I'm gonna be able to transform the whole garden over, but I just don't want you to feel like you have to, you know, get in there and then you gotta mulch everything, you gotta weed everything, you gotta get every bed ready, and you have to do it within 48 hours. You don't have to do that. Just take your time, it's an ongoing process. So let's see if I can do this one-handed. This is my cold frame I built. And this is my winter sowing. You can see holes in there. Those are mice getting in there and trying to eat the seeds. But if you can see in there, things are starting to pop up. There's one looking good in there. That's spinach right in the front, kale in the back. Some of these are broccoli. Some of these are cauliflower. And these were all put out at least a good four weeks, five weeks ago. and they're all starting to grow. So you don't necessarily need grow lights to grow your cool weather crops. You can set up a cold frame like this. Here's a bit of chaos. I was just throwing stuff over the fence. The wind blew this off. Let me walk over there. We'll come in from the other side. So this is what I've been using. The hose link is gonna go right in here, the 50 foot uh, retractable, but the ground is frozen. And I just got tired of having to wind up and lug this hose around, it would just lay around. Now I'll be able to retract it. When I need to bring water over here, just pull it out, hook it up to the hose link that's already there. And I'm actually gonna do a third one inside my fence line right over there so that I can get the side of the house and my other gardens over there. I'll talk about those gardens maybe next time. Here's a bigger sort of warming area made out of the corrugated um, polycarbonate. You can, and I've done videos on this already, I mean, you can do winter sowing with a tote or something like that. I don't know if anything's coming up in here yet. No, nope, not yet. 
But if you don't have grow lights, you can plant up a lot of the cool weather crops. Just get them outside, give them a little bit of protection, and they will germinate and do everything that you want them to do. That's what I've accomplished. Mulch down from that bed that I filled all the way to the fabric pots. Everything over there by the wheelbarrow. You can see one of the mulch piles that are just sitting there that I'll be spreading out. And I'll just slowly work my way right down here. And then I'll be moving into the garden that I'm going to be really growing for my warm weather crops. So things are, you know, moving along. I'm really excited. I hope you guys are able to get out into the garden. I know a lot of you have frozen ground. A lot of you are still under snow. But it's getting to be that excited, exciting time. Um, I think this is going to be a great year for all of us. Here are some, I don't think anything's coming out of here. These all died off because I never planted them. Those are still living. But you can see sometimes I end up over planting and just never used any of these. You can also go into Home Depot, Lowe's, different nurseries. You can buy, like how's this going to survive? It's not even getting any water. And get, um, you know, the grapes, the blackberries, any kind of tuber or anything like that. Put them into a container. Start them now. Just let them sit here, you know, outside. They will grow, whatever. You're going to save a lot of money if you want to bring in perennial plants to your garden by getting those bulbs at Home Depot and Lowe's, dropping them in a gallon pot, watering them in, and when they establish, you know, put them throughout your garden. This is a nice way to do it. Unless, of course, you plant way too many and you don't get to them. But I literally probably planted a hundred of these throughout my property. Saves you so much money. You get your perennial plants out, you get grapes out, you can get blackberries out, raspberries, carrots, all kinds of different things by just, you know, buying what you see at Home Depot and Lowe's. Now, you do have to take care of them, but it's worth it, I think. So we're to the end of the garden that needs some love. Spinach is popping up in there. I'll be moving that. These are all dried beans that I can collect and cook and plant. And then I'll be working my way over to the strawberry plants because I'm going to give them a nice boost of some fish emulsion in a couple of weeks. Warm weather's coming and I'm going to see which one survived. But this is going to be a whole lot of strawberries in these towers and I'm going to be growing peppers in there. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to put some more information about hose link at the end of the video if you want to you know, check that out. I do highly recommend it. A retractable hose is wonderful for the garden. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and cheers to spring. Pretty soon we'll all be out there planting our gardens. I just wanted to show you the hose link up close if you're interested in picking this up. So by the time you buy 50 feet, 80 feet of hose, you buy a hose carriage, you buy the nozzle, you're spending a lot of money. And it's not really easy to work with. I really recommend getting a retractable hose. So hose link comes with these connectors that are real easy to use. So the top part here goes right onto your, your um, faucet or your spout and then the other piece stays here and you can disconnect this really easily by just turning it so it's really mobile. You can move this around. Same thing here. This is a shut off for the hose and then the nozzle just clicks into there, you turn it, and it's set up. The other beauty with this is that the nozzle spins, so you don't get a kinked up hose because this actually rotates and just takes away any of the twisting. They also come with spare washers, which a lot of places don't offer them. Perfect for setting up a nice retractable hose system. They also have so many other products on their site. Please check them out. Different accessories, different tools, Anything you can really think of. If something wears out, you can get a replacement piece. If something is damaged, they honor their warranty quite well and they will help you out. So check out Hose Link. That's my 82 foot hose for the inside of the garden. This one is 50 feet and I want to show you something that's cool. So for instance, you could get go to their accessories, you could get another a piece like this where you can attach it to different parts of your house. The hose link, let's see if I can find it, right over here just sits into this. So you could put two or three of these throughout your house and then the hose link you just 
pull out of that plastic piece and you can just carry it to another location, hook up the hose to another spigot, and you can move your hose around that easily. I mean, I think it's a wonderful system. Again, check out the video description, check out my affiliate code for hose link, and if you're considering a retractable hose, this is the company I recommend.